Okay, so the paper was accepted by experimental gerontology. They went on to publish it. This is called Life Slow Fuse? No, Life Slow Fuse was the title as sent to Nature, and I changed the title because I did not want to uh, compromise the story. I didn't want to confuse the story. The original submission was called Life Slow Fuse. Right. We probably have a copy of that somewhere? Of course. All right. Then the experimental gerontology paper, what is it called? The Reserve Capacity Hypothesis. That's Okay, which is a much less catchy title, but nonetheless, the paper, I'm very proud of how it's written. People read it who were not expert, could understand it. The abstract is extremely clear, and it ends with the clear point that because we have unearthed, we have predicted, and Carol Greider has shown that wild mice telomeres are short and that telomeres have been elongated by captivity, that there is a clear danger that the mice we are using for drug safety testing are biased in an egregious way. And the bias would look like this. A mouse that has very long telomeres has an indefinitely large capacity to replace damaged tissue. And it has a vulnerability uh, to cancer that is preternaturally high. So we may be overrating, if we use these mice, we may be overrating the danger of causing cancer and vastly underrating the danger of toxicity. of toxicity. And in fact, one of the things, so the point was you give a mouse who's got a effectively infinite capacity to replace its tissues a toxin, and either the toxin is so deadly that it dies right away, but if it doesn't die right away, it just eats up the insult. Um, so those animals would lead us to release drugs. By insult, what you mean is cellular necrosis? Damage. Yeah. yeah. What this would cause us to do is release drugs onto the market for human use that are highly toxic across the body. Well, and wait a second. If if the mice if the mouse standard was the last standard. Well, no. Even right? if it's not the last standard, well, because it's important to say this. The problem is, I mean, you you can imagine how hard it is to test on large, slowly reproducing animals. Well, and so, the ethics of testing on humans is very absolutely restricted. So, mice is the, is the last cheap place. It's the to last get cheap great place. Large n data. Not only large n, but it's the one place that you can make the following move. You can imagine that in many circumstances, the accelerated lifespan, the accelerated life cycle of mice allows you to see long-term damage as it would accrue in humans on a very short time scale. Mm. That doesn't work with monkeys. It doesn't work with human patients. It works with mice, maybe. But in the case of mice with ultra-long telomeres, those insults will be invisible. Well, let's just, I want to back up because I think this is a really important part of the story. What you're saying is if you take an organism that has an expected, let's say, 40-year lifetime, it's very expensive time-wise to say we ran this experiment and found that uh, there was no immediate damage that was visible, but towards the very end of their lives, we saw a marked increase in morbidity. Or Yeah, I mean, if you took a drug and it knocked 15 years off your life on average, that might not show up in any notable way in a short-term study. There was pressure to... Right, and nobody is going to want to let drugs, you know, you don't want to wait 40, 50 years to find out what happens to these patients. So what we do is we make the assumption that if we give large amounts of a drug to an animal that lives a very short life, we will see those effects early. And if the animal happens to have ultra-long telomeres, you won't see those effects early. So it's a perfect storm for causing us to release drugs that should never have been released into public. Can you think of one? Oh, I sure can. Viox, for example. So Viox was discovered to do heart damage, right? Heart damage. How do you, why do we know that it's heart damage? Well, the thing about hearts, A, hearts, for reasons we can get into maybe another time, hearts have a very low capacity for self-repair. Right. That's it, why they're vulnerable not much to heart turnover, attack. not much capacity for repair, not much turnover. Now, there, there's an adaptive reason for that. But um, but hearts don't repair themselves very well in a healthy person. And when they fail, it's hard to ignore. Right. 
if somebody who's 30 has their heart fail, there's questions asked, right? So anyway, Viox was released into the public having passed drug safety testing. This isn't the only system that doesn't have a lot of mitosis. Like, for example, neurons. Neurons don't have a lot. Uh, cartilage doesn't have a lot. Got it. Um, your eye cells don't. Now note, all of the tissues I've just mentioned, when was the last time you heard about anybody having, you know, cancer of the cartilage of their knee, cancer of the heart? No, if they almost, get brain cancer, it tends to be glial. It's glial cells, exactly. Right, right. So the tissues that have very low capacity for self-repair right. do tend to wear out, and they don't tend to get cancer, which is exactly one of the predictions of my paper. Right. Okay. So um, Vioxx is known to do heart damage. That created a big scandal because how the hell did it get through drug safety testing? turns out a lot of drugs have done this. We've seen it in Gleevec, Fenfen, erythromycin. Your doctor probably still doesn't know that erythromycin does heart damage. Yikes. Right. There's all of these cases of drugs that were released and then later understood to do heart damage. Now, my claim is they don't actually do heart damage. They do cellular damage and the and heart, heart damage is the only is thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. This right. is, this, geez, this is like another layer of this thing. It's like a huge fucking nightmare, right? Because well, but it's this thing about like perseverance and disagreeability. You've got all sorts of things that sound like something that invalidates the theory. And then it's sort of theories upon theories that right. allow you to see the original simplicity of the idea. I see the original idea is very simple, yep. but if you know a lot of like weird facts about what you think are just mice or something about hearts, you can't put together what is going on. The idea that ambient damage is only manifest in the heart because that's the one system, uh, you know, or, or the neural system that like really doesn't have a lot of mitosis. 